Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here in the shack for a ham shack chat about getting FL Digi to work ready with the N3 FJP logging programs. Using the North American QSO party ready flavor as the target of opportunity, I'll show you how to set up the N3 FJP contest logs and how to set up FL Digi for the contest and go through the macro settings as well. Please note that this process can be used for any of the N3 FJP software, including the amateur contact log. RIDI is an underused mode that is great for RAG2 QSOs, as well as doing a number of regional and international contests, or as I like to call them, operating opportunities. Please, Feel free to express your opinions, concerns, and questions down in the comments. Questions? Comments? We're going to start by setting up our N3 FJP contest log for the North American QSO party. The first thing that we want to do is in our settings, which will normally pop up first, but you can also bring it up here. You want to make sure that you're in the right contest. NAQP has CW, SSB, and RIDI flavors, and we're doing the RIDI. So make sure that that's checked. Next, we want to go to our rig interface. So we go to settings, rig interface, and we want to make sure everything is here. I am polling my rig, and I've got my settings loaded, so I'm just going to reload this. This is my IC7300 using the CIV connection. I'm going to open it. You see I get a pit waiting response and I'm in SSB. I'm pulling the rig so we're done. Next we go to our settings, application program interface and you want to make sure under the API that you have this first one up here checked. Nothing else on this page is checked. So now we're going to set up our FL Digi. In FL Digi, we're going to start by clicking on Configure, choosing Config Dialog, and going to Logging. We'll expand that, and we're going to check N3 FJP. We got the information when we did the API over here in N3 FJP. We are on address 127.0.0.1, which is our local computer, and port 1100. You want everything down here checked and I'm going to connect it at this point. You'll see that it cycled and when it came up our connected button is showing a green. We can save that and close it. The next thing we want to do is go, about, go back to configure and we're going to open up the miscellaneous and pick out sweet spot. I'm going to be working on 1500 for RIDI, so make sure that your RIDI is set at 1500. I've got them all set there. I'm going to save that and close it. Now we're going to go into Configure, Configure Dialog, and go up here to Contest. And I'm going to click on General, and you'll see it comes up, NAQP. That's because N3FJP is telling it it's NAQP. We're going to save this and close it. Up here under Op Mode, we want to make sure that we have selected Ready, then Ready 45. Next thing we're going to want to do is go to our Rig Setup, so Configure, Dialog, Rig Control, and I use Hamlib. So here's everything that I've got set up under Hamlib. I'm going to save it and close it, and we're going to go Verify our audio. Config data. Down here under sound card, we're going to go to devices. And I've got my microphone checked. You want port, port audio checked here. And we're going to save it and close it. So right here underneath the frequency is our list of modes. This is what we're telling the rig to be in. And my rig is in USB data. The way you get that is you set it to packet USB. Now there's a chance that it could be packet LSB as well. So if you're working and you're just not making a contact, try changing this to packet LSB. It's a quick fix. Uh, beyond that, 
I doubt that there'll be any problems. In the next segment, I'll be actually transmitting. However, I will have my rig turned down to 5 watts and be feeding my signal to this dummy load. I really think that every shack should have a dummy load for testing without going out over the air. I use a Diamond DL30A, which is a 50 ohm load rated at 15 watts average. I picked mine up for around 30 bucks and I found it on both Ham Radio Outlet and DX Engineering for right around 40. I've included a link in the video description to my Amazon Associates account where you can pick one up for $17.03 and free shipping for Prime members. If you use this link, Amazon will pay me a small commission that does not change your cost at all. Before we finish this up, please share Thank you for sharing this video with your friends and compatriots in the ham radio community and especially on social media. If you're enjoying this or maybe even learning a little something, please take a moment to pop that thumbs up icon and give me a like. I really liked it. So let me show you my macros. I have built two sets and there is some crossover between them. So this top line is I'm sitting on a frequency and I'm calling CQ and letting people come to me. We call that running a frequency. The bottom line here is if I am scrolling through the band, looking for people to work, and we call that search and pounce. So up here under NAQP, to get in and edit your macros, you want to right click on it. It'll pop this up, putting the rig into transmit, then I'm sending my message, and my call, my call is what I put in my setup. Then, as a courtesy, please K. Then I put it back into receive, and this sets it so four seconds after I send that, I send it again. It'll keep cycling. I don't have to keep pushing the button to send my CQ message. We'll click apply and close. Then this is my run reply. So right click. I'm sending, we're setting it to TX, then you see I'm sending call, which is whatever I have here, right in this, this area here. I'm sending the call, then my report, which is Tom, Ohio, Ohio, and then the call again. There's a lot of people who are calling, and a lot of times you they won't hear who you're coming back to. However, you send your report, and then repeat their call, they get two chances to pick up that it was them. And then I, of course, put it back and receive. Apply and close. And finally, the last thing I send is their call. Thank you, QRZ, my call. Then this logs the contact. So let me show you how that would look. I start by calling CQ. So I just click on that. And you can see I am sending, again, into a dummy load. Now, I just wait and show you that it's going to repeat. I'm going to press my escape key to stop that. And I'm going to assume that I'm getting an answer back. Somebody's going to come back to me with their call. So, I'm going to say it's my wife. So, K3TAM, and I'm going to hit my tab key. And I get K3TAM has populated over here. So I'm going to hit, hit my run reply. So it's her call, Tom, Ohio, Ohio, her call. At this point, she comes back and she tells me her name is Tammy. And that she is in Ohio. And I'm going to run my QRZ. And you can see she has now populated over here. It's We're done. Now, if I'm not running a frequency and I'm doing search and pounce, I've got this second line. So I hear N1 LID. He's calling. And I go back to him. I just toss my call out. I like to send it twice. Now I'm waiting for him to come back to me. He's going to come back. He's going to tell me his name is Boz. And he is in Maryland. And I'm going to send my SMP report. So 
I'm just going to send a thank you, Tom, Ohio, Ohio. And if there's any questions, you know, like he didn't catch my state or my name, I can answer those. At this point, I'm going to log it. And you'll see that N1LID is here. So we're, we're good. Now, what happens if I get a dupe? So I'm going to put right here, but I hear K3TAM working. So I'm going to put her in here, K3TAM, and I'm going to tab out of that. And you hear what happens. It tells me I've got a dupe. Now, because I have a dupe, I'm going to right click on the thing that says me, QTH, and I'm going to write one from scratch. So we come over here. I find, scroll down till I find my TX. There we go. I got TX and I'm going to click the arrow. Then I'm going to go his call and find that. There it is. Call. And I'm going to put SRI dupe. That's if I get the answer. And I'm going to put it back into receive. There's receive. Hit the arrow. I'm going to change the label to dupe. Apply it and close it. So now I have dupe here. So see I got my K3TAM. And I can go K3TAM sorry dupe. You could also say worked before or something along that lines. I hope this gives you a leg up in making contacts using the N3 FJP software and FL Digi. I also hope that you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed doing the research and putting the video together. Please remember to like, share, comment, and please consider subscribing to this channel. It means a lot to me. By the way, be on the lookout for a very short video where I just show my FL Digi and N3 FJP screens as I go about doing uh, about an hour of the North American QSO party. I will fast forward it down to something under five minutes. 73 until the next. Hey y'all, as always, I am at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out. Wow!